I've been learning Golang for the past few days, and it's been absolutely wonderful so far. I've been building little mini projects and been following this little guide on GitHub to get through it, and it's been absolutely just amazing. I love every single part about it. Now, unfortunately, this language has been getting absolutely blazed on the internet with so-called poor design, lack of security, and just being designed for other computer systems. And I'm on Windows, which is funny because I literally see Linux everywhere I go. But anyway, I've been putting my hardest work in trying to learn this language for a very specific reason. And that reason is going to be that I want to get into more web development. And I know, I know it's burnt out. But I think it's very crucial to get into this language because it is so easy to build stuff fast in a synonymous way to Python. But you can also get some unbelievable performance because of that, you know, binary. What do you call it, man? Binary execution because it's compiled. So for those who don't know, a compiled language... For those who don't know, a compiled language is a language that takes your code and then it actually computes it into some sort of computer code so then you can execute it right after. And this is really special because it is so much faster than an interpreted language. And the language that I've been specializing in for the past year and a half or so has been Python and I honestly really appreciated how quick this syntax was, but to be honest with you, I felt like the abstractions were really starting to harm me. And abstractions, for the record, are very nice, you know, we also we use it every single day. If you go to a math class, it's an advanced math class, say calculus or anything above that, all the things get provided to you and you can use them in a very heuristic way. You can use it very easily, but the actual backbone behind that stuff is not easy at all to learn. And that's exactly what Python does to you. You end up using these very crazy functions that do a lot of amazing things, but you're like, damn, dude, I don't feel like I'm actually coding. And that's where the imposter syndrome comes from. But learning a lower level language like Go gets you out of that loop. I'm going to walk you through how I learned it, the things I am learning, the differences that I've experienced. And I'm also going to give you some insight on some possible projects that I'm going to build with it. So first things first, this is the directory that I have. It's called Learn Go with Tests. And it's directly reflected off of what I'm learning off. There's a GitHub repository here called Learn Go with Tests. And the reason this is so intuitive is because I personally don't like having to find all my resources by just praying. I like when they're all in one place and I don't need enough to learn the whole language. That's kind of a silly thing to do because most of these languages are designed to be very multi-purpose and when you try to learn every single angle and corner of a multi-purpose programming language it's like not going to benefit you at all because for the most part you could be doing one or two things tops and if you want to do more than that still you're not going to learn everything about it let's dumb this down even further if you play minecraft are you going to learn about every single block in the game before you start building stuff no you're going to use what you need at the right time come on right use your brain a little bit there's only about 21 chapters here so i probably could have got all this done but you know i get a little distracted Although we have some lock-in juice today, so don't worry about it. I was browsing through all these and, you know, first off, installing it very, very easy. And you have all these amazing little descriptions here. Let's actually get into the learning. First things first, most of my code actually looks very synonymous with Python. I mean, these things you could almost mistake into Python apart from the Wallace operator being everywhere. And that's also one of the very interesting things I noticed about this language. You know, you use this operator. I'm pretty sure there's a name for it, but I just call it the Walrus operator because that's the name I learned on Python. And then you actually have to explicitly define your structs. And I love that it's a typed language because Python kind of masks itself as a typed language. From what I've seen, the only reason Python actually uses types is because we've implemented types and they got really annoying and verbose. So we ended up having to just correct things over time. And it, it makes programming bigger projects nice, but it's just kind of one of the flaws of Python. So when you have it built into the language, the compiler actually has more space to know what to do. So it, it's faster. And you know, the results actually define that perfectly. So for this video, I'll try to build something at the top of my head. And that's going to be a page that tells you to subscribe to the max syntax. And it's going to actually check if you subscribe to me. And if you haven't, then it's going to, I don't know, shut off your computer or something. So we just made a new directory called sub the max. Let's add the main dot go file. So what are we going to need? I think we need to get a very basic function. I don't think it's gonna take a whole lot here. Formally enough, I actually don't know how to get input. Then we just do bar subscribed. Have you subscribed to max syntax? Answer percent s subscribed. So this should run and then we should be good although we need the boolean so return see there's a way in python you can do this but i don't even know how to use the, the or operator in this language bro this has been a learning process what is the idiomatic way of implementing this oh this is nothing wrong with using ai to answer your questions in a way that a browser would but using it to learn everything is kind of stupid I ask for projects and ask it to critique me on what's wrong with my project so that I can learn from it. Never ask it to do your code for you because that will absolutely destroy your learning. Because one of the main reasons that I've been actually a little slower in this is because I am brute forcing my way through all this because that's kind of necessary. You know, it might be initially your thoughts might be, yo, well, if I learn it with AI, it'll be a lot faster. But the shortest path is kind of long in the long run. And the answer why this is or is because that is actually the bitwise or. 
Haha. <laughs> so now we just go to funk main. Oh, go run main dot go. Have you subscribed to Max Syntax? And the answer better be yes. It better be. Boom. Now open up another little file here. It's going to be called check.go. Okay, so I know this is possible and you can do it by checking someone's link and whatnot. But bro, the implementation behind this would have taken so long. And unfortunately, I woke up super late today and I had to post this video by at least 3.30 to 4. And bro, my microphone's been broken for the past video. And I think YouTube didn't even recommend my video because how bad the microphone was. Anywho. It was really depressing when I learned that this project was just not possible to fit in this time frame, but I really wish this video could have been better. I'm trying my best, guys. I might have to take a little bit longer in between videos to post because I really want to get all my ideas down and not to like rush through them. Well, let's sit down here and talk about Golang. There is an infamous rant here. I want off Mr. Golang's wild ride, and it was updated five years ago, so it is kind of an older article that is in 2020. Damn. And this guy, if you notice how small the scroll bar is right here, he just went off. A lot of these have been fixed, but there's still some things, of course, you know, you can't fix every single thing in here. He, he essentially wrote the biggest issue that the language has ever experienced. You, like this, this is a novella. It's a 30 minute read. There are people who don't like the language and there's massive advocators of this on Twitter. I see him all the time, especially this big rainbow sphere guy. He's very intimidating, but I respect the hustle, of course. So of course, I have a lot to learn and I cannot wait to build some cool things with this language because listen, learning a language is very, you know, it, it's very humbling. It's very humbling. I feel like I feel like an absolute buffoon sometimes when I'm learning this language. But on the other hand, I feel like I am becoming a polyglot in programming. So it's a very amazing experience. Anyways, though, thank you so much for watching. Hope I got most of my ideas off. None of this is too insane. Although I will say before I leave, I did actually build an event loop. Not an event loop, I just built like an event system. This is my favorite thing I've built so far because I did implement some synchronous primitive things. So that is very amazing fun. Yes. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.